Mr. Bowman here. I'm just going to do some of the higher chemistry with you. Um, I'll be doing three different videos based on this and there will be questions throughout. Okay, so this first lesson we're doing, we're going to look at how we can calculate the relative atomic mass. All right, so there is a do it now here. Um, I suggest you pause it and have a go. However, this is more of a thinking task to see if you could figure it out because what we're going to be doing this lesson is looking through how we would work this out, okay? So it says, I've got four atoms of different isotopes of chlorine, three atoms are chlorine 35, and one atom is chlorine 37. What is the average mass of chlorine? Okay, so think about how you'd work out an average. And so in science, it's generally gonna be the mean. So how do you think we could work out the mean from those? And if you do manage to figure it out, then explain what you've just calculated. Okay. Right, moving on. So if we want to look at what the relative atomic mass is, we need to make sure we know what isotopes are. Okay, so hopefully you have learned this and it's been covered in the other lessons. Um, here we've got three isotopes of lithium. So we've got the atomic number and the atomic mass for all three of those. Okay, so the atomic number for all three of them is three. The atomic mass for the first one is six, second one is seven, and third one is eight. So nice and quick, shouldn't take you too much. Could you calculate the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons for each isotope of lithium? Right, so hopefully you guys can remember that the atomic number is the number of protons, okay? And the number of protons and electrons are always the same unless it is an ion, uh, which these aren't. These are isotopes, not ions. So the number of protons and the number of electrons for all three of these is going to be three. The atomic mass is made up of the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So to work out the number of neutrons, we do the difference between the two numbers, or the atomic mass minus the atomic number. So for the first one, it's going to have three neutrons, second one be four neutrons, third one five neutrons. Okay, so all the atoms are the same element, but they have different numbers of neutrons. Okay, so that means they're isotopes. So an isotope is um, variations of the same element that have the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. Now, when we look at the periodic table, most of the periodic tables you will see will have whole numbers for the atomic mass um, or for the mass number on them. There are some exceptions, and these will be things like chlorine, where they're in the middle. Okay, so 35.5. Now, on a more detailed periodic table, most of the elements that are on there will have uh, decimal uh, places afterwards with more numbers. Okay, they're not exact, but for the sake of what we use in school, they are rounded to the nearest whole number. So why do you think chlorine is at 35.5 and not 35 or 36? So for that, we would have to work out the relative atomic mass. Okay, we use the symbol AR. Now that's this formula here. I'm gonna say write this formula down. We will be using it to do some calculations shortly. Um, hopefully you know that that symbol means sum of. So it's the sum of, okay, this symbol here, it's the sum of the isotope abundance times by the mass number divided by the sum of the isotope abundance. Now on its own, it doesn't really make much sense, but I'll go into that in just a moment. Okay, so make sure you've got that written down for me. If we were to look at doing this as a work example, Okay, the question here says the abundances, so that's the overall proportions 
of the two isotopes of chlorine are 75% of chlorine 35. Okay, so that means it's got a mass number of 35 and 25% of chlorine 37. So it's got a mass number of 37. We calculate the relative atomic mass of chlorine as follows. So this is where we use that formula. Okay, so the sum of the isotope abundance times by the isotope mass number. So the first one, the abundance is 75%, so 75 times by the mass number, which is 35. Then you add, because it's the sum of, so you add, then we do in brackets for the next one, the isotope abundance, so this one's 25%, times by the mass number, in this case, 37. Okay, then we do those calculations divided by 100. So it's going to be 2,625 plus 925 divided by 100, which equals 3,550 divided by 100. So our relative atomic mass is 35.5. Now, what you must remember is that if you get an answer that has not come out in between the mass numbers of the different isotopes, OK, so it's either lower than the lowest one or higher than the highest one. That cannot physically be your answer. OK, it has to be essentially it has to be a mean. It has to be an average of them. So it has to work out somewhere in between. So I'd like you guys to have a go at this one for me, please. Use that formula that was um, on the last slide. Hopefully you wrote that down. So it says there are two isotopes of bromine. The relative abundances are shown below. 50% of the bromine atoms are bromine 79, and 50% of the bromine atoms are bromine 81. So please work out the relative atomic mass of bromine. Okay, if you need to pause it and have a go, then do so. Okay, and that works out as being bromine 80. So if we use our formula, then it would be 50. Okay, so the isotope abundance times by the isotope mass number. So 50 times by 79 in brackets plus 50 times by 81 in brackets and you divide it by 100. Okay, the total abundance is going to be 100%. So divide by 100. As we said, that gives us 80. So the relative atomic mass of bromine is going to be 80. OK, we're going to work through some exam questions. So there's going to be a couple of slides. And I want you to have a go at those questions on there. OK, um, hopefully they're not too challenging for you. OK, so this is your first slide. So pause the video, have a read through and work through it. Now, this one is based on the uh, combined science level. So you don't need to know how to work out the relative atomic masses for this. But you do need to understand this to be able to then work out the relative atomic mass. And when you're ready, play the video again and move on to and we'll move on to the next slide. OK, so this is our second slide here. Uh, this one is where you need to work out the relative atomic mass of copper. It's given you the abundances. It's given you the mass numbers. It's three mark question. So I want you to think about how we would actually work it out. OK, how do I get those three marks? OK, so let's work our way through these nice and quick. So it says an atom of copper has an atomic number of 29 and a mass number of 63. Complete the table to show the numbers of protons, neutrons and electrons in this atom of copper. Now, hopefully, again, this should be fairly easy. You should know that the atomic number is the number of protons and that the number of protons, and the number of electrons will be the same. OK, it's got a mass number of 63. So we do 63 minus 29, and that gives us 34 neutrons. You need to get 
Um, one right to get one mark and two or three right to get the two marks. Sorry, I'm going to change that. You need, you need to get two right to get one mark and three right to get two marks. Sorry, my mistake. Um, so, question two. Copper is in period four of the periodic table. State what information this gives about the number of shells that contain electrons in a copper atom. Hopefully you guys can remember that the period tells us the number of electron shells. The group number tells us the number of electrons in the outer shell. Right, next question. Copper exists as isotopes. Explain what is meant by the term isotopes. Okay, so atoms of the same element with the same atomic number or number of protons, but a different atomic mass or number of neutrons. If you reference electrons in this question, it makes no difference, you won't get a mark for it, okay? It's the number of protons or the atomic number you need to talk about, and the atomic mass or the number of neutrons being different that you need to talk about to get you two marks. Right, final part of this question. A sample of copper contains 70% of copper 63 atoms and 30% of copper 65 atoms. Use this information to, can, to calculate the relative atomic mass of copper in this sample. Okay, so remember AR is our relative atomic mass. So you do the abundance times by the mass number. So 70 times by 63 plus the abundance of the other one, so 30 times by 65. Add those two up and then divide by 100. Okay, so it gives us an answer of 63.6. Now, if you got the answer, then you do get all three marks. And typically in science, this will be the case. However, we do see it a lot where students write the correct answer. They might have either rounded wrong or they may have just put in a number wrong into their calculator. And quite often, this means that they get zero marks. Whereas if you would write out your working, then you have every possibility of still getting a couple of marks, even if you didn't get the correct answer at the end. OK, so please make sure in exams you write down your workings. It also helps prevent silly mistakes. OK, so we've come to the end of this slideshow, to the end of this lesson. Um, nice and simple one, really, for the higher ability. The next couple of lessons are going to go into more detail um, when it comes to calculations and moles in chemistry. OK, they'll be a bit more in depth and there'll be some harder questions for you guys to do. All right. Thank you very much. Bye.